Hello students, welcome to Ants classes. Let's do linear equations in one variable, exercise 14b. Question 19, three consecutive whole numbers are such that if they are divided by 5, 3 and 4 respectively, the sum of the quotients is 40. Find the numbers. So let's look at the first part. Three consecutive whole numbers. Remember, consecutive means the numbers that come one after the other. And we are talking about whole numbers. So, let the three consecutive whole numbers be x. Let the first number be x. So, the next number will be x plus 1. And the third number will be x plus 2. So, let these be the three consecutive whole numbers. And here it's saying, if they are divided by 5, that means the first number is divided by 5. Second number by 3 and the fourth number by and the third number by 4. That's why it says respectively. So the first number is divided by 5. And what is the first number? X. X is divided by 5. So we have X by 5. Then the second number is divided by 3. So what is the second number? The second number is X plus 1. So X plus 1 is divided by 3. Then the third number is divided by 4. And what's the third number? x plus 2 and that is divided by 4. So, so much we have. So, we have three consecutive whole numbers that is x, x plus 1 and x plus 2 and they are divided by 5, 3 and 4 respectively. Then we are told that the sum of the quotients is 40. So, the sum of the quotients is 40. That means if I add up these three, the first number divided by 5, you will get a quotient. The second number divided by 3, you will get a quotient. The third number divided by 4, you will get a quotient. So, when those quotients, when you add it up, you get 40. So, x plus 5 plus this number plus this will give us 40. So, let's work that out. So, here x by 5 plus x plus 1 by 3. So, x plus 1, let's put it within brackets, plus x plus 5. 2 by 4. All this will add up to 40. So now as you can see these are unlike fractions. So we have to find the LCM of 5, 3 and 4. So let's do that. So 5, 3 and 4. Let's find the LCM. So let's begin with 2. So 5 as it is, 3 as it is, 2 twos are 4. Then we continue again with 2, 5, 3 and 1. Now we continue with 3. So let's do that. 5, 1 and 1. Now we have only 5 left. So we can divide this by 5. 1, 1 and 1. Now what is the LCM? LCM is 2 into 2 into 3 into 5. Let's multiply. 2 twos are 4. 4 threes are 12. 12 fives are 60. That means the LCM is 60 and we're going to use that as a common denominator. So let's go back to this part here. We're going to use 60 as the common denominator. So here, this is going to be 60. This is a common denominator. Now 5 into 12 is 60, isn't it? So let's write that here. So that means 5 into 12, that means I need to multiply x also by 12. So x into 12 is 12x, 12x plus. Now here what do we have? Here we have 3. 3 into 20 is 60. So let's write that here, 3 into 20. That means this also I should multiply by 20. So let me write that here as it is 20 into x plus 1 plus. Now here I have 4. 4 into 15. 4 into 15 is 60. So I multiply this by 15. So let me write that there. So that is 15 into x plus 2. And all this is equal to 40. So let's work this out. So here I'm going to write this as it is 12x plus. Now let's multiply 20 into x first and 20 into 1. So that makes it 20x plus 20 into 1 is 20 plus, let's go to the next one, 15 into x and 15 into 2. So that is 15x plus 15 into 2 is 30 and this is divided by 60 and this is equal to 40. So let's continue there. So here let's take the like terms. I have 12x 
plus 20x plus 15x. So how much is that? 12 plus 20 plus 15. 5 plus 2 is 7, 2, 3, 4. So that's 47. So that makes it 47x. And we have two whole numbers here, 20 and 30. 20 plus 30 is 50. So plus 50. So let's write it here. Plus 50 by 60 is equal to 40. So first what we're going to do is we're going to write 47x plus 50 as it is. And we're going to transpose this for 60 to the other side. It becomes multiplication. So 47x plus 50 is equal to 40 into 60. 4 6s are 24 and add the two zeros, 2400. Now we're going to find only 47x. So that will be 2400 minus 50. So 47x is equal to 2400 minus 50 is 2350. Now we're going to find the value of x alone. So this is 2350 divided by 47. Now when you do long division or cancelling, when you divide 2350 by 47, your answer will be 50. That means we have found the value of x. x is equal to 50. So this is the first step. We have not finished the answer because we've been asked to find the three numbers. What are the three numbers? x, x plus 1 and x plus 2. So let's find the three numbers remembering that x is 50. So here the first number is x, isn't it? We said the first number is x and x is 50. The second number is x plus 1. So how much is x? x is 50 plus 1 is 51. This is the second number. The third number we said is x plus 2. So x is 50, 50 plus 2. This is 52. So now we have our three numbers. We have 50, 51 and 52 and they are three consecutive whole numbers. So which are the numbers? 50, 51 and 52 are the three numbers. So let's write that. The three numbers are 50, 51 and 52. So this is our answer. Question 20. If the same number be added to the numbers 5, 11, 15 and 31, the resulting numbers are in proportion. Find the number. That means if we take any number and if that same number is added to all four numbers, the new number that we get, numbers that we get will be in proportion. So what is this number? So let us consider the number to be added to be x. Let the number to be added be x. That means what are the resulting numbers? Resulting numbers will be, you have to add this to, this, to these numbers, 5, 11, 15 and 31. So let's add that 5 plus x will be the first number, then 11 plus x is the second number, 15 plus x third, and 31 plus x the fourth number. So these are the resulting numbers and they are said to be in proportion. The resulting numbers are proportion means the first, the ratio of the first pair of numbers is equal to the ratio of the second pair of numbers. So let's write that. So that means the first number 5 plus x, the ratio of this to the second number 11 plus x is equal to the second pair of numbers. That is 15 plus x is to 31 plus x. Now, how is this so? Because these four numbers, the resulting numbers are said to be in proportion. So this is how they are in proportion. Now we know how to find this, isn't it? How to find the value of x here. So what do we do? We know that the product of means, product of means is equal to the product of extremes. So we can multiply the means and the extremes and get our answer. So let's take the extreme. So this will be equal to 5 plus x multiplied by 31 plus x and this is equal to the means that is 11 plus x into 15 plus x. So now let's multiply this. Remember this is multiplication of binomials. We have learned multiplication of binomials. 
So I'm going to take the first term here, that is this term, 5, and I'm going to multiply it with the whole of this. So that becomes 5 into 31 plus x. Then I'm going to take the second term, that is x plus x, and multiply it again with the whole of the second binomial, 31 plus x. We do the same thing on this side. We're going to take this 11 and multiply it with this. So what do we get? 11 into 15 plus x and continue second term is x into 15 plus x. So now let's work this out. So here first we multiply 5 into 31 and then 5 into x. So 5 into 31 is 155 plus 5 into x is 5x. Now similarly here we're going to multiply x into 31 and x into x. x into 31 is 31x and x into x is x squared. Now this is equal to here also we multiply 11 into 15 is 165 and then we multiply 11 into x which is 11x. So plus 11x. Similarly here we do x into 15 is 15x and then we're going to multiply x into x, that is x squared. Now let's look for the like terms. Here we have like terms. Here also we have like terms. Let's simplify. So here we have 155 plus 5 plus 31 is 36. 36x plus x squared is equal to 165. Now plus 11 plus 15. 11 plus 15 is 26. So that is plus 26x plus x squared. Let's bring all the x terms to one side and the whole numbers to the other side. So here all the x terms will be 36x is already here and x squared is already here. So we'll write that 36x plus x squared. Now from the other side we have this that is plus 26x plus x squared. We'll bring it to this side. It becomes minus 26x minus x squared. Then on the other side, we already have 165, so we have 165 and we're going to carry this 155 to the other side, it becomes minus. Now let's simplify what we have here. 36x minus 26x, 36 minus 26 is 10, so 10x. Then we have plus x square minus x square which gets cancelled, both these get cancelled. On this side, we have 165 minus 155, which is equal to 10. So 10x is equal to 10. That means x is equal to 10 divided by 10. And this, when you cancel, both are 1, 1 by 1, which is equal to 1. So we have found the value of x. x is equal to 1. So what have we found? We have found the number. We said let the number be x. And we have found x to be 1. So our answer here is 1. Question 21. The present age of a man is twice that of his son. So we know the age of the man is twice that of his son. So we don't know what the son's age is. 8 years hence, that means after 8 years, their ages will be in the ratio 7 is to 4. Remember, in a ratio, the order is very important. So whose age will come first here, the father's or the son's? So look at the question. The present age of a man and then son. So first is man and then the son. So keep that in mind when you form this ratio. So here, let's write down. Since we don't know the age of the son, let's say let the present age of the son be x years. So this is his age. And here they are saying the present age of the man will be twice that of his son's age. That means... 2 into x which is 2x years. So this is the present age of the man. Then they are saying after 8 years, after 8 years, the son's age will be x plus 8. The son's age will be x plus 8 years because his present age is x. After 8 years it will be x plus 8. Now the father's age after 8 years will be at present it is 2x. After 8 years, it will be 2x plus 8. 2x plus 8 years. 
This is the age of the father after 8 years. Then we are also given that their ages will be in the ratio 7 is to 4 after 8 years. So the ratio of their ages after 8 years is 7 is to 4. So the ratio of their ages means now we have the father's age and the son's age. So let's write that. So the father's age after 8 years, that should be written first. This is 2. Ratio, we are finding the ratio. The son's age after 8 years, this is equal to 7 is to 4. Now this as you can see is in proportion. We have a pair of ratios here, another pair of ratios here and they are equal. That means they have formed a proportion. So product of extremes is equal to product of means. We can multiply that. So let's do that. So 2x into 4. So we write it that way. 4 into 2x plus 8 is equal to 7 into x plus 8. So now let's simplify this. So multiply 4 into 2x and 4 into 8. So let's do that. 4 2s are 8, 8x plus 4 into 8, 8 4s are 32. Similarly, on this side also, let's multiply 7 into x and 7 into 8. 7 into x is 7x, 7 8s are 56. Now, let's get all the x terms to one side. So, 8x, bring 7x to the side, it becomes minus 7x. And here we have 56. Let's take 32 to the other side, it becomes minus 32. So, here 8x minus 7x is x, 8 minus 7 is just 1. And 56 minus 32 is 24. So we have found x. And x is the present age of the son. So the son's age is 24. So let's write it here. The son's age is 24. Now the father's age is 2x. That means 2 into 24. 2 into 24 is 48. So now we know the father's age, present age is 48 years. And the son's age is 24 years. So this is our answer. Son is 24 and the father is 48. So let's write that. The present age of the son is given as, is, we found out to be 24 years and 48 years. So with this children, we come to the end of this exercise. Thank you children.